Hi friends, I've recently been a little bit obsessed with this video I've seen on YouTube. It's by a guy called Nico. He runs a site in the US called Nico's Wings. If you haven't seen it, I'll make sure I link to it below. And he released a video recently about a flight he did in his Cirrus SR22 where he suffered some electrical failures. He actually had to declare a mayday and land the aircraft quickly. And so it got me thinking, what would I do in the event of an electrical failure in the SR22 that I fly? So this video features me on a practice flight I did recently with my instructor Mike Walden testing exactly that. What would I do in a plane that's so heavily focused on the electronics and avionics? What would I do if all of a sudden I lost all of that? Okay, so just having a look at it, some key issues for us for an outside air temperature of 4 degrees. So yeah. in terms of icing we would look at how we would manage any icing scenarios. At the moment we're not in icing conditions and we're not likely to go into icing conditions. But if there were cloud build-ups, I would look at A, can we stay at this height? Yeah. B, if we did go higher, do we have the ability to manoeuvre around uh, icing conditions? You can see here that even on this, you can see that there is you know, a little one that pops up there, a little one pops up there, yeah. and there's just keyholes. For example, on this cloud straight ahead of us, yeah. we would be able to just deviate slightly right. Three, 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 five, and ten. all you have to do is ask five, for a deviation five, for, you know, three miles left to right of track. Yeah. And that's all they would need. But these sorts of clouds like this one we're about to go into now, so this would be, this is a small cumulus cloud. Yeah, strato Q, you yep. can tell it's a bit bumpy, so yes, that's the cumulus part of it. Um, nothing but nothing to worry about not at all if you're in ice or near ice conditions you may get the worst of the icing at the top of the clouds yeah that's where it's like to be coldest and that's where you might have some moisture in there yeah first okay. signs of icing so will be for visual approaches moisture turning into crystals on the windscreen yeah and then and you look out and you have a look at your stall strips and you'll see them starting to appear on the stall strips on the leading edge. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. 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 Yeah. Uh -oh. Okay, that's, no, that's not a good sight. Yeah, so this, is, this is what I mean. So if this yeah. happens in IMC... Yeah. Wait, how, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? Well... Well, first of all, that chime He's telling you what? It's, I've got a caution. Uh-uh. Uh -huh. that? AP is flashing red. No one's controlling the blade. Ah, uh, autopilot is disengaged, yeah. right. So now you yeah. have to acknowledge that. By clicking the autopilot button, and right. you are going back to this. I'm just on my standby instruments then. Yeah. Correct. All right. So that's a pretty bad situation because you've lost two attitude heading reference systems. Yeah. And now you're on the third one. So, you know, it, it must have been a bad day to lose both of those. So this is why the Cirrus is so good for IFR and night flying because they do have a lot of redundancy. Yeah. And it's interesting being back on the standby yeah. instruments again as well. So try turning left to a heading. Right. So how would you do that? Well, first of all, we've got track information up here. So we can actually just turn to a track. So turn left to a track of 360 for me. All right, left 360. So I'm on the artificial horizon. Maintain 2500. Okay, just going to go shallow angular bank. Yep. Well, you don't really need to. You've got you've got a full attitude indicator there. I mean, it's the same as what you probably yeah, had I know. <laughs> when <laughs> you started. Being tentative, though. All right, yeah, true, so... So we're just watching that, and we're pretty close to 360. Okay. Perfect, so now... No, no. We'll just go uh, back to 2, and now it's come back. If we lost our ADC, we'd lose all of that, plus our power setting, plus our OATs. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. And, but we do have manifold pressure. But, yeah, I was just going to say, so we can just go off up here with manifold pressure. Correct. Yeah. So again, okay. you've got three of those, so to get to that stage you've lost two of them. Alright, perfect. Okay, taking over. Handing over. Now what we're going to do 
is we're going to do a alternator failure. Yeah. So let's have a look at an alt failure. So an alternator failure. If we have a look at alt one. Alt one. Let's pull that. So that's the first. So what have I noticed here? Look at that. Battery one's got minus. Something not right here. Yeah. Wonder what's going on there. So that's. Now that's going yellow. Hello. And now we've got a warning that's come up as well. That is correct. So now we have to acknowledge it. So what we do is we go to our checklist. So go to your checklist. Checklist. So alt one before we go through this. Okay, so alt one circuit breaker, check and set. Well we know that's out. Yep. Assume it isn't. So alt one master switch, make sure that's on. Turn it off. To turn it off. I'll cycle it, yeah. Okay, so off and then back on. If it does not reset, so you've got low A1 current. Yep. So, so Alt 1 master switch off. So turn it off. So that goes off. Yep. Then we start reducing the load on the non essential bus. Okay. Which so is aircon, landing light, your servo, anything else. So let's yeah. just have a look at that. We'll just exit that. And we'll go to here. And we can see it's all getting a little bit silly. So what I can do there, see how that's got negative? Yep. I can turn that off. I can turn all of this off, and notice how that's starting to ah, coming back, yeah. come back again. Yep. So I might turn around and go, you know what, that's stable there, in fact it's charging, so I'm a bit happy with that. Yeah. And everything else is looking okay, my main bus is a little bit stuck, but... So that's gone up to, so that's charging the battery now. Yep. and you would then pick a place and land. Yeah. Okay. Yep. PFD1 and PFD2, okay, so that one PFD8, off, PFDB, oh, oh wow, geez. gee this isn't good, yeah what that's now? the one you dread, well, so, uh, standby instruments, look what's happened, so now oh, COM yeah. one's out of action, that one's out of action, but we still have our GPS and we can still fly and we get our engine information from here, and using our standby yeah, instruments so for... Over. Okay, taking over. There you go, maintain 2,500. Turn left 360. Left 360. At 2,500. Oh, you forget how super disorienting it is. When you head down in the cockpit, turning... But you still have your autopilot, don't you? No, we still have autopilot, so I can engage that. Right. Turn the autopilot on. Heading. Heading mode. Altitude. G altitude hold. Ah, yeah, of course. Oh, it's doing a way better job than I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the troubleshooting you have to do, isn't it? Because Correct. the moment that screen goes blank, you've got to work through what you still have available to you, Correct. as opposed to thinking it's Correct. just all gone. Yep. Yeah. So there's some of the examples. Yeah, that's good. Of the electrical phones. Okay. The alternator one would be the typical one. Yeah. Like if you, you know, if you had an alternator belt fail or something. And in so in kilo Juliet November then, because we don't have the checklists in the same way, but I've got the checklists in the Correct. paper booklet, Correct. so I just do the same thing. Exactly. So that. just follow that process. You follow the checklist. Yeah. That's all you do. And just remind me with a if we had a complete comms failure, uh, like on an IFR flight plan. If I'm VMC VFR, I'm. Yep. I could work around that, but if we're IFR with a comms failure, outside controlled airspace? So the first thing you do is go 7600. Yep. Because the transponder is a separate unit to your VHF comms. Yeah. So you try one comms versus another comms. Yep. You'd squawk 7600. You'd go transmitting blind. If you're not getting anything then, it would be divert to the nearest airfield. You can get an ATC on your phone, do that. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. Next one. Otherwise, if you can't raise ATC, you run 7600. If you're in IMC... If you're in IMC, then it's a case of continue finding a place to get out of it. If you can. Yeah. So, um, get out of the IMC if you can. If you can't or it's not, then it would be do an approach and land at the... Um, learn a suitable aerodrome. Yeah, yeah, okay. But if you're not in IMC, then you can come out VFR and visually get yep. yourself to an airfield yep. and notify Air traffic control will wonder where you are yeah. if they've lost 
if they've lost you on the, on the system. Yeah. So 7600 is very important. Understood. I'm starting to get a bit too comfortable with the perspective. This is this is not the serious perspective though. This, this is, is the perspective plus. Perspective plus. Yes, okay. so this is the next one up from the perspective. And it has a number of really cool things in it. The fact that it's combined the uh, the attitude and heading reference system and the air data computer into their own boxes yeah. works really well. So you can have multiples of the ADC AHARS 1, ADC AHARS 2. The other thing that's really useful is the fact that your fuel flows are so, uh, so laid out so nicely. When ready you can tell exactly where you should have the fuel flow in terms range. of whether you want best power or whether you want best economy. So when I'm using lean assist in KJN, it's totally different to this. Correct. We have a best power arc. Yeah. And we have a best economy arc. Okay. So if I want best power, I'm just I'm leaning until my fuel flows in this arc. Yeah. Or in this so green, green section. The uh, top green two section two is best power. The bottom section is best economy. Yeah. It makes it really easy as well on um, climb out, I noticed. So leaning yes. on climb out. Because I'm mentally kind of extrapolating what fuel flow I should have yes. based on yes. the placard in, yes. in the G3. Yes. But here you've just got an arrow which points to where you need to lean to. So to everyone watching, we did do the Barrow VNAV down at Shepparton, but I didn't film that because I just wanted to practice it myself. Um, but if it's something you're interested in seeing... Oh, well, thank you. Well, let's be honest, the plane did most of the work, didn't it? But um, but if that's something you're interested in seeing, if you want to see me and Mike do the Barrow VNAV, leave me a comment below and, and let us know, because that's something that we can definitely go out Absolutely. and shoot again in this aircraft. But yeah, it makes um, makes those INAV approaches, well even it was the teardrop entry, the hull, so the hull descent basically yeah, down to minima, all done on right, autopilot. Right. Yeah. Alright, let's go home. Let's go home.